rent it's too damn high. In 2010, Jimmy McMillan ran for governor of New York as a member of the Rent is Too Damn High Party. And while he did not win the election, he did pose an interesting question and one that we still ask today. Why is the rent still too damn high? The answer to this question for many was simple. Greedy landlords were simply charging too much for rent. And so politicians offered a whole host of solutions. Things like rent control, eviction reform, building and zoning codes. And many of these policies were implemented in urban areas all across the country. But despite this, renter strikes were still very common. In Chicago, activist Nicholas von Hoffman, who regularly worked with Saul Alinsky, was organizing a renter strike at a building that was becoming increasingly dilapidated. After a lot of work, they finally scored a victory. The landlord agreed to come to the building and hear from his tenants. But nobody expected what happened next. The landlord showed up to the building with his lawyer, and right before he heard from his tenants, he motioned to his attorney and said, well, tell them. The lawyer opened up his briefcase and removed the deed to the property. He then informed Nicholas von Hoffman and the tenants that the landlord was willing to sign over the property to anybody that could purchase it that day. The price was $1. The tenants were thrilled, but Nicholas von Hoffman would later recall to his mentor, Saul Alinsky, that he was shocked by the news. He understood that if a property owner was willing to sign over an expensive building for such a small amount, then there was probably something more at play. So why did the landlord do it? I mean, it's hard to make an argument that somebody motivated by sheer greed would sign over an expensive property for $1. Complicating building codes made it far more expensive to build new residential properties. So as demand increased, the supply stayed the same, or in some cases even decreased. The result was, prices went up. For existing properties, rent control and laws which made it nearly impossible to evict someone who wasn't paying their rent meant that property owners could no longer charge what they needed to in order to maintain the building and pay their taxes. The result was previously well-maintained buildings fell into disrepair and became slums. A combination of these factors meant that builders that could navigate the regulatory environment and build new residential properties didn't want to do so because A, it was expensive to build, and B, once you had the building completed, if it fell under rent control and eviction control laws, you might not be able to actually maintain the property. Despite this reality, these policies remain in effect in urban areas all over the country. Not because they've actually delivered on their promises, but because from a political standpoint, they're almost impossible to reform. Everybody wants to be able to find quality and affordable housing, and all of us want that both for ourselves and our neighbors. But if we're serious about accomplishing it, we have to look beyond the stated intentions of a policy and look at the incentive structures that it actually creates. Because no amount of good intentions is gonna overcome an environment where you punish people for producing the very thing that we need more of. Thank you for joining us on The Why Minutes. I hope you'll go over to thewhyminutes.com and subscribe so you can get updates on our content that we put out weekly. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.